we all know that you kind of disrupted the baby care market in a big way and now you are you know building your you know building a house of brands so we would like to hear about all of that so, so i think we um, we started because of our son agastya and uh, we were looking for natural safe toxin free products uh, for him and uh, I uh, couldn't find any here in India for that matter also realized that India did not have any regulation around safety of certain ingredients what were the ingredients that were being used on an adult skin were the same that were being used on a baby skin as well and that's something that made us uncomfortable because uh, we had certain awareness around what toxins are and what ingredients must be avoided because we had stayed in new york for some time and there were certain brands which were being called out because of the same reason um and uh, for a while i think early on you're just getting your hands on to parenting and parenthood um you start ordering products from outside of india tracking friends and relatives um asking begging hoarding i would say and um in the process which is very very cumbersome inconvenient and also uh, very expensive and we come from a middle class background so i think that was something that we were uncomfortable with and uh, i think at some point of time we were also wondering that why is there no brand who is listening to consumers like us because we clearly saw it as a white space we were not getting what we were looking for um, and if there was any brand who was actually listening we would have widely given them our problem and requested them to solve for it uh, but that god they didn't uh, because of which we are here today talking about mama earth we said that if nobody else is doing anything about it is there something that we can do uh, and that's how we started i think with a very very small vision with just six baby care brands at that that time the vision was that mama earth is going to be a baby brand um, but yeah i think uh, you'd want to take it from here yeah i mean after that it's just been a journey of listening to consumers right i think very early on uh, when we used to meet a lot of investors they used to uh, already scare us by telling us that hey it's a very competitive market there are so many large players right um, how can you beat them um, um and i think one of those uh, nights when when you're talking and discussing uh, we discussed ki yaar agar iske bare mein sochte rahenge to fir we probably won't even be able to start right if we only think about consumers right and if you only think about that you know what do we need to just survive or get this started right and that's probably the first thousand great consumers who love the brand and can we get there and what do we need then we will once we reach there we will talk about it but once we got there and we got not just thousand consumers but thousand advocates who were spreading the story because it was a shared journey story anyone who was hearing that you know parents were doing something for kids around india right that was a story worth sharing right and when those thousand were sharing we said hey if we can do this we can serve the next 10000 and and so on and so forth we just kept focused on consumer and that became our dna and, and we said hey when we are listening to consumers they are clearly saying uh, thankfully babies were not buying the products it was the moms and dads who were buying the products and then they were coming in buying our products they were saying we love what you're doing we love the purpose of the brand we love that when we come to your website and place an order you plant a tree and you connect uh, you know our order back to a tree which i can see where it has been planted and you know that is amazing and hence we would love to buy products for ourselves also and that's how we expanded into categories like adult care and listening to these consumers we realized ki nobody really was building for india right almost all multinational corporations were importing for india rather than crafting for india and and we are culturally different yaar hum log we like to use hing and coconut oil on our babies tummies right and not give gripe water right so someone had to listen to indian problems i mean indian tropical weather did not require heavy creams wo to because 
यू नो ब्रिटिशर्स वर हेयर वो अपनी क्रीम्स यहाँ ले आए तो सब लोग वही यूज कर रहे थे वी नीडेड लाइट हाइड्रेशन एंड वी सेड इफ वी हैव टू बिल्ड फॉर इंडिया वी हैव टू बिल्ड फॉर द इंडियन स्किन इंडियन कंज्यूमर्स एंड एंड दैट्स हाउ द जर्नी ऑफ क्राफ्टिंग मोर ब्रांड्स हैपन एंड दैट्स हाउ वी बिल्ड साइंस बेस्ड इंडियन ब्रांड्स वी बिल्ड हाइड्रेशन ब्रेड ब्रांड विच इज एक्वोलॉजिका वी आर ट्राइंग टू रिवाइव Ayurveda for millennials, which is a lost love. And so I think from where we started, right, our consumers kept teaching us how to build the next year, right, and we kept focused on them and kept building. So you are a talk in the boardrooms of most of the leading legacy FMCG companies. You force them to reinvent themselves. Did you ever imagine competing with them? Uh, I think you know, like I said, right. Sometimes. imagination can also be scary and and matlab uh, if we would have thought about ki oh i will be competing with x y z who has so much more capital who has so much more r and d in hamari gaadi garage se nahi nikal pati right so like like that we just kept focused on the next milestone even today we are focused on our next milestone right and we are focused on serving the indian consumer and building with the indian consumer right um, and and everything else is noise you're looking at building a full fledged fmcg company you're positioning yourself as a house of brands uh, would like to hear you know more about it as to you know how important is it for an fmcg brand to look at a portfolio of products and not just focus on one portfolio of brands sorry i think varun did talk about the fact that when we started mama earth our entire focus was on consumer it was not on competition it was not on category size it was not on what some th somebody else is doing it was to understand them better and this house of brands as a strategy as we call it now was actually a white space that came out of those consumer callings and they were the ones who told us that we are looking for something like this which is a void and the more we talk to them we understand how they behave right so if for example a consumer has to attend a wedding she would want a hair color which lasts much longer on her hair if she is going to office she would want a long lasting lipstick that she doesn't need to reapply on a regular day she would need a gentle natural face wash for her skin because she's using it twice a day etc so they were what we realized were that these were such different propositions that if we would try to do all of that or make all of these uh, products available within a single brand it would be injustice because they are large propositions in themselves and that's why that's how we figured those white spaces and the need to craft more brands we started with uh, the dermaco which is a brand uh, based on skin concerns like acne and pigmentation it gives you active based um you know recommendations that can help your skin concerns get better um and that was not something that a mama earth could have done now either we could have let that proposition be and allowed somebody else to do it but because we realized it and we saw there was nobody else catering to this side of the market uh in india we decided to build another brand for it and i think this is how most of our other brands also came into picture the audience um perceives all of these brands to be very different there are different occasions where we, they pick up different proposition and hence uh we want to be that company who's able to provide them with all of the options that they are looking for coming to you ishan uh how important is it for a for a brand like mama earth to look beyond uh mama earth and you know build a house of brands as an investor how particular were you that you know they have a portfolio of brands uh we were not because we <laughs> when we invested there was no talk about the second brand and uh, honestly speaking we couldn't care less uh because as i was saying what we really cared about is that gazal and varun were keeping their consumer at the center of decision making and as long as that ethos and that philosophy was preserved and nurtured uh we knew that they'll build a phenomenal business and we knew that that is what is truly missing uh in the companies that are being built uh right because that's what we were on the lookout for and we were just not finding we used to find people who used to explain to us how they can get exclusive of revenue by contract manufacturing something and putting it out there because you know the market is growing so fast but that's not good enough where's the consumers need and 
that was enough for us as investors. And we knew that that's not just enough because it sounds good. We knew that that will get followed by revenues, that will get followed by profits, that will get uh, followed by value creation. Uh, and that's exactly how it has happened. Like, I can tell you that when uh, Varun and Gazil uh, sh talk about new brands with us, right, that's the first thing they say that, you know, we are seeing this gap, the consumers are searching for it, and there's nothing. And, you know, the global brands cannot meet it because, you know, Indian skin is different and they explain stuff which I don't always get. Uh, to arguments? Huh? It, Argument would be a very strong word. It leads to a lot of questions uh, because uh, we are not, I mean, very honestly, uh, not even close, uh, uh, close to having as much knowledge as they do about those products. So we ask fundamental questions uh, and try and play our role uh, to, ma to making sure that everything has been thought of. Uh, in 99.99% case, person cases, it has been thought of because that's how <laughs> Gazelle is <laughs> when she thinks about new products and uh, that has done so well. So you never like burning fingers or... Um, no, no, I'm <laughs> sure we have burned lots of fingers, they're all black, right? <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, like Ishan said, right, he, this is a very lonely journey otherwise, right? I mean, um, uh, I, I used to work before this about 10 years in different companies, right? And there is always a boss, a boss ka boss, right? Who you can go and ask questions and present your plans and they'll give you feedback and you'll know, okay, now I have blessings, I can move on, right? And suddenly when you're running your own company, you realize boss, koi boss hi nahi hai, right? <laughs> you are the boss and you're supposed to take all your decisions, right? But thankfully, if you have a good board, right? Uh, and you have the right investors, right? These questions do make you take, sharpen your decisions, right? And that's what we have seen, at least in this uh, beautiful partnership that we have had. Right? Um, we will make mistakes, right? of course, agar, um, but because of that, if we start experimenting, right? then we are clearly not going to build, right? I mean, um, if, you, uh, if, you, if you make mistakes, yes, you can fail, but if you don't try, you will fail, sure shot, right? So I think you have to try without the fear of, uh, you know, uh, failing. In, you'll fail and learn or you will succeed. So I think both are great scenarios. So one last question to all three of you, whoever wants to take it. So, I mean, we have a room full of guests. Uh, what would be your two cents to anyone who here in this room who's wanting to start up afresh? So I have, I, I don't come from the regular FMCG industry like Varun does. So my, I think, advice would also be on similar lines. I think when I started out, I had a lot of self-doubt. I had um, a lot of questions in my mind, um, which did exist for some time even after starting up. Um, but what I learned through that was that rather than pretending to be someone or pretending to know something, it's actually... Um, okay to humbly accept that you don't know something and you better learn and, and you know, admit it openly. Um, and with those little pieces putting together, I would say that any kind of bias shouldn't hold you back from taking that first step, trying to do something and build something yourself. It's a journey of learning, even if you have certain side of experience or you don't have certain set of experience, till the time you don't take that first step towards bringing your vision to life, you will never know if it'll work or if it'll not work. Um, so my advice would be that if there is any reason, there will be 100 things in your mind that don't take the first step, but don't listen to them. Take that first step, get into it you will automatically give it your full and you will figure the journey out. Ishan? Uh, very simple. I would say, Suraj se zada chamakna hai, to Suraj se pehle uthna shuru karo. Right? Uh, there is no shortcut to hard work. Right? I think that's what we have learned through this journey. Right? That you can be as smart as you want to, right? but you got to put in the hours, you got to be persistent, you got to be consistent. So I think that is what I would give as advice. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.